think this is on. Hello everybody, this is podcast number three. Today we're gonna to talk about all things military, private contracting companies, US military, facts, stats, debt, how reliant is Europe on US military, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about the extent to which the US economy is reliant on contractors and kind of the significance that that has. So this is according to the Department of Defense. I'm going to read you a quote. DOD contract obligations and payroll spending in the 50 states and the District of Columbia totaled $559 billion, which is 2.3% of the country's gross domestic product. If the total spending were divided across every US resident, it would amount to $1,684 per US citizen. So I'm gonna put that in normal people terms. U.S. contracting companies, that profit off of war, and this is not from a like activist position, which, hell yeah, I love you activists. You are amazing people. You do a lot of great things. I'm coming about this from an academic perspective right now. Sometimes they're related, sometimes they're not. You guys get my overall point. So these U.S. military manufacturers are, they, they have factories in every single state. Now, the purpose of this is to ensure that if there is a theoretical politician, whether it be a congressman, woman, something in between there, a senator, etc., who opposes a war, that would affect a contracting company. Then that contracting company could withdraw resources or withdraw that factory from that state, which would hurt the constituents of that representative, thus hurting their representative in terms of popularity, in terms of electoral support, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, thus causing kind of a lot of internal turmoil and it affects that individual's career. So the system that is created is systematically set up in order to ensure that there is an incentivization, in order to ensure, once again, that these companies are able to prosper. Do we get it? Okay, I'm gonna go one step further into this. Now, this is according to the cost of war. It's from Brown University. Essentially, it's an organization that collects a bunch of facts and stats regarding the U.S. wars. Here's what they say, quote, of the 20 states with economies most dependent on military manufacturing, 14 experience poverty at similar or higher rates than the national average. Oopsie poopsie. What does that mean? Well, it means that the states that are most reliant are exceptionally reliant. Okay, that sounds kind of basic. You might be like, well, wh what the hell does that even mean? Long story short, there are some economies in some states that are completely dependent upon weapons manufacturing companies in order to ensure that they survive. Does that sound like there's any sort of longevity to that? No. What's scary about this is the fact that the US produces 40% of the world's weapons. So wow, what does all this mean? Let's, let's tie this all together. It seems like there's a bunch of random parts. Let me, let me throw it all together. Okay, so here's the thing. We produce 40% of the world's weapons and it almost as if we have to produce these weapons in order to keep our own economy afloat into bringing some people out of poverty. Republican, Democrat, regardless, let me ask you a question. Does this seem like it is sustainable? Let me put this. Do you think that this is an intelligent idea at all in any way, shape or form? You want it sustainable? Is it sustainable? It doesn't seem sustainable. Does this sound like something that's ethical? No, it, does, it doesn't sound ethical. Okay. Does it sound like something that should be changed? Maybe revolutionize our industries so we are less reliant on these weapons manufacturing companies because it pushes our soldiers closer into war so they have to fight and die in countries we probably can't point to in a map? Like, do you guys even know where Central African Republic is? And don't say Central Africa, okay? Can you point it out? And this is not a dig against you guys. It's not a dig against anybody. And specifically, what my point is, is that by funding these things, we are not only promoting war, but at the same time, we are pushing our soldiers closer into wars that they shouldn't have to die in. Why does somebody in Arkansas or Florida or California or whatever, Oregon, why do they have to die in a war that they probably shouldn't be in? Weapons manufacturing companies develop weapons for who? Who do they develop it for? Well, actually, I can tell you that aside from U.S. wars themselves or Ukraine, by example, they also develop wars for, say, Saudi Arabia, who's the second importer. I was thinking, like, what is the word? Importer of U.S. weapons. They are creating a literal genocide against Yemen. Hmm, that doesn't sound like something we should support. What other industries could we potentially get into? That is my overall point. We need to change this into an industry that is more sustainable and ethically principled. What could that possibly be? I have an idea. 
What if we find a new market that is sustainable, say for example, instead of looking backwards, say for example, looking at coal companies, what if we looked into green technology? And what if we just absolutely viscerally smash the whole world in green technology, which is a sustainable outcome? We get people full-time paychecks to learn how to do this, give them the skills to be able to develop this technology, which would not only provide a livelihood for them, if you're worried about pulling people up from the bootstraps, making sure that they are able to change their own lives, we have to make sure that they have a sustainable project to ensue. So for example, if we were to train people, give them the skills to be able to get into an industry that's sustainable, not only could they provide for their family, but also at the same time, they could also give that job to their kids. And then their kids have a job, and then their kids have a job, and also at the same time, they're not destroying the environment. Now, even for those climate skeptics out there, who don't believe that climate change is a thing or in any of this, in which I can go on a rant about that, believe it or not, climate change is a thing. And if we look at the carbon dioxide and everything else between the industrial revolution and now, we can see that, oh, look at that, we're actually affecting the climate in negative ways. Okay, cool. Guess what? Even if we weren't to take any of that into consideration, guess what? We still need an industry that is going to thrive in the future. What industry is going to thrive in the future? Green technology. Hmm. So perhaps there should be a politician who should support a bill to increase industries that are more sustainable than weapons manufacturing. Food for thought.